So now let's get into our exercise for last week. So last week, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, last session. Wow, I go so fast. I was thinking last week. So last session, I challenged you guys. Once I had, you know, we'd already talked about the 12 brand archetypes. And then I introduced the four bank categories. And I challenged you guys to put the archetypes, three of the archetypes, into the four categories. And here are the answers. And I saw some of you guys definitely did attempt this as well. So here are the answers, okay? And I, I, I wanted to add this separate screen because I think this just kind of really gives you just a little bit easier understanding. So if you look to the right of the screen, right? Blueprint. Remember our blueprint values, stability, structure, systems, planning, right? They're like that neutral guy. They're the conservative guy. So our blueprint, they're about rules, duty, and authority. They're going to be the ruler. Remember, they're very, you know, like they are the top of kind of like the food chain in terms of authority and uniform and setting the rules and instruction. They love rules. They are ruler. And then, of course, the hero, because if you look at the language for the values, responsibility, right, duty, that's all hero language. And then, of course, because the blueprint, you know, they're just like that conservative guy. They're not too hot, too cold. That definitely appears to the regular guy, regular girl brand archetype. So the next one is action. And then I think you guys kind of could automatically know like, yes, definitely that outlaw rebel personality was definitely action. And that explorer personality, right? Because they like going after things and conquering the world. And you may not have thought gesture, but you got to remember the actions, they love fun. They love excitement. You know what I mean? They're in the moment. So that's that gesture um, brand archetype nurturer caregiver definitely was a, a given i gave you guys innocent as well as a clue and you may not have thought about lover but remember this still goes into community harmony relationships is a dead giveaway to let you know that is that lover uh brand archetype that's what they would fit in and then lastly we have knowledge and i also gave you guys um sage um as a cheat code so we got Sage because you know it's knowledge, right? Creator, definitely, you know, the creator brand is, like I said, they're actually the ones who are going to help you be creative, you know, and, and, and take that, that on. So they're like platform builders, tool builders, and things like that. And then you may not have thought magician, but if you think about it, magician is into transformative, right? They're into like that whole transformation, science, magic. So you got to think like alchemist and things like that. So that is that one. So congratulations to everyone who did attempt it. And um, for those of you who did get the answers right. So I'll be providing the answers for you too in the study hall. So I hope that helps as well. Okay, so now we're going to get into organize and categorizing of your products. So one of the things that I, I'm very big on is customer journey, right? Customer journey is so important. Um, that's one of the things that so many people, they get wrong. Like I've had so many people who they're like, people come to my site, but they're leaving. And they don't understand it's the navigation that's killing them. Like, as you know, I own the Black Virtual Mall, and to be in the mall, you have to have a website, which means I evaluate and have evaluated literally thousands of websites with these applications, and that's the hardest thing. So one of the things that when we talk about layout is how are people going to navigate? Now, most people, we think about the templates, sort of just basics in terms of navigation. We just think like, all right, men, women, children, you know, or... uh clothing, accessories, makeup, you know, we kind of think about those header categories and then we'll get into subcategories. But I also want you to think a little bit more about your tribe and what appeals to them. And so I want to use one store that I've had experience with in terms of navigation. Now, this wasn't online, this was in person, but it's still the same thing. Back in the day for uh, Forever 21, one of the things that I loved and everyone loved about Forever 21 is everything was color themed. So when you went into Forever 21, there was like a red section, the yellow section, the green section. And so 
everything that went with that, they just, you know, had that whole color thing for you. That was so easy on my brain in terms of shopping, because it was like, I knew a lot of times what color I needed, or I could be inspired by the outfits that they had put together by color. I loved it. And then I remember they changed it up and they changed it into style. So I walked into Forever 21 and it was like stuff was everywhere. I remember my brain just feeling so drained because it was like uh, trendy. It was like, um, you know, conservative. It was uh, edgy. It was, it was just stuff was everywhere. And me personally, I'm not really that, you know, hankered into one style aesthetic. So it was really hard for me. And I, I remember not going back. I remember after that, like, I just could not go back. It was just like utter chaos for me. And ironically, I noticed that their stores um, and their sales declined a lot after that transformation. So this is really something that you do want to consider when you're helping your people to navigate through your products, okay? So um, you may have them in order by particular collections, right? You may have them in order by color. So those are some things that you can think about. So what research can you pull out about your target audience and their pain points to help them navigate your site? Now, product descriptions and photos, okay? So, you know, of course, photos are so important when we're looking online to shop for clothing, primarily because we're not in store. So we can't touch it, we can't feel it. So when we just see the clothes sometimes, sometimes that works, but actually seeing it on our body, it does make all the difference in the world. And I'm gonna tell y'all, a lot of these, a lot of these little e-commerce stores and these boutique girls, they they've been getting over because I'm gonna keep it a book with y'all. They have the most beautifully built women on their little stores with the clothes. And I know I'm shaped like L, like the letter L. I'm Sesame Street letter other day. Maybe you can give me a little Y, you know, a little, little something on the end, something on the bottom. I am not nowhere near, you know, an hourglass shaped woman. Yet they still get me. I see the clothes on the model and I'll be like, oh, that's cute. I get it home, I'll be like, mm, mm, mm. But it gets me. It gets me every single time. So seeing it on that body does that really help for the imagination. And one of the things that's also really, really important that I see a lot of people doing now is putting an in info like the model wearing this is a size six or she's five feet tall or how much she weighs because, you know, we're not always able to gauge correctly her height and everything, you know, when we don't have anything to compare her to. And I'm very short. So that helps me a lot to see like, okay, is this thing going to drown me out or what is it going to look like? So um, the sizing chart, of course, we already know that that's important. And are the product photos high resolution and to access them? And so that rollover feature is really important. So you go into websites where you mouse over the image and it automatically shows you like the back of the shirt if there's something on the shirt um, or if the back has a different design, that's going to be very helpful for as a selling point as well.